The cheap Chinese wiring loom for quads and scooters is the gift that keeps on giving because I've been depotting some of the components. And this particular one is the rectifier and regulator module. It was very easy to depot. I put it into acetone just to see if I could dissolve the resin. It's a metal case with the circuit board inside and the resin in the top softened. And as I started digging it out, it went all scrunchy. It turns out that the unit had been filled up with sand inside just to pack it out. And then just a thin layer of resin had been floated over the top. And that means that uh, if these units are used well outdoors, which is, they're going to be, it's quads and bikes, you're not going to use them indoors. Water will potentially wick around the seam between the connector and the case and it will potentially soak into that sand and make it humid inside and get trapped inside. So I wonder if that's going to cause many failures in these. When you take this out, though, there is a thyristor on the back of a single-sided circuit board, and it's had some sort of thermally conductive glue. So when they've put it in, they've scrubbed an area in the back of the case, and when they've put it in, it's thermally glued onto the back of the case. Let's take a look at the circuitry. I'll nudge down slightly for this, just to fill the frame. We have four connections. We have the green wire going in, which is the chassis, it's the negative. We have the red wire, which is the car battery positive, the, the quad battery positive. And we have the two wires from the, uh, the alternator, the magneto. The yellow one is for lighting and the white one is for charging the battery, as far as I can see. If you thought there was going to be some sophisticated battery charge protection, you know, to avoid overvolting the battery and just basically burning it up, you'll be disappointed to know there isn't because the entire battery charge circuit seems to be the white wire going to the input of this diode, through the diode, and then to the battery. That is it. So keep a spare battery. You may need it if you're doing long trips. The... Other circuitry here is based around the thyristor in the back here and the bridge rectifier. And I'll show you the circuitry for this. I'll show, I've reverse engineered it, so I'll show you the schematic. So here's a magneto. It has one winding reference to the chassis. It's got the yellow going to the lights and it's got the white going to the uh, charge for the battery. Here's the, what, what's in that module. It's just the diode between the white and red. So it is charging the battery straight from the white winding via a diode. The other part of it is quite odd. You see, if this is the output from the magneto and it's quite a high voltage, because uh, it will have a fairly high open circuit voltage, particularly at high revs, I would guess, what happens to the battery is that the battery voltage will effectively cap it on the positive going uh, waves. So it will cap it down to, say, 15 volts or something like that. On the other side, it does something very odd. It's got this circuitry here, um, and this is effectively, I suppose, ultimately, the, the lights are seeing their positive going voltage being capped by the battery. But on the negative uh, half of the sine wave, as the alternator turns, it goes up to a certain voltage and then it just clips it and block it shunts it. So um, that bit there would be active of the sine wave. And here's how it happens. The green and the yellow have a thyristor across them. Because it's going to be effectively, the yellow is going to be negative with respect to the chassis. At that point, that's the direction the thyristor goes. It goes through a bridge rectifier, and I get the feeling that they've based this on other people's circuitry, but then skimped and cut and modified, and there's, they've, they're missing a trick here. I reckon they could have reduced the component count more. Ugh, it's a very odd circuit. But the output of that rectifier... It goes to the circuit. There's a PNP transistor which is switching to the positive rail and it's got this diode heading over to the gate of the thyristor. So when this transistor turns on, it will turn the thyristor on and it will basically just shunt the, uh, the green and yellow together and basically short circuit the alternator. This is apparently how it works. Uh, uh, it's a bit odd. <clears throat> the circuitry for uh, that, the transistor is normally turned off, kept turned off by this 560 ohm resistor. But then there's a, a little network, the 10 microfarad capacitor and a 4.7k resistor across it, and then a 2.2k resistor here. And as the voltage increases, it gets up to about 15 volts, and this effectively forms a potential divider and a slight time lag, I guess. It's a bit odd. Not sure. I'd have to actually see it running on an actual bike. But there's a 7 volt uh, Zener diode, and as soon as the uh, its voltage is exceeded, the 
base of this transistor starts getting pulled down to the negative rail, it turns on and it shunts out. That's what's in it. And I get, I get the feeling that they could actually, I might be wrong here, let me know what you think. If they just put a wire link across here and a diode across here, I reckon they could have cut that uh, bridge rectifier out and achieved the same result. Not that it is necessarily the best result. It's a bit strange. Uh, but this is apparently how things are done on bikes. But there we go. Um, it's cheap. It was part of a very cheap loom. It seemed unusually cheap. There's a reason for that. It is absolutely bare bones minimum. It is just basically enough to make the bike or quad work. And that is all you're going to get. But there we go. Very simple. I'm almost disappointed. I thought there was going to be some protection of the battery against over voltage. I don't think it's going to have an uh, effect through the winding of sh bridging it in the other half that's going to somehow affect it magnetically to cap the voltage. I really don't think so. And also you'd think that this strange turn on and suddenly shunting is going to result in lots of more dissipation from the windings and also make the lights possibly quite flickery in a way. But uh, having said that, the, in this one, uh, it looked as though the lights were probably just going to be powered directly from the battery and it wasn't going to use the yellow lights winding, uh, noting that the lights would be powered from AC. So it, would be a, it wouldn't even be a proper sound wave they'd be receiving. It would just be a very choppy waveform capped by the battery charging and capped in the other half by the, uh, by the circuitry here, uh, shunting it. Very strange. Let me know what you think. I'm new to opening these bike components. They're very different to what I was expecting as in like super minimalist and, and a bit strange in the way we, they work. But let me know down in the comments what you think of this circuitry and if you think it's good or bad.